WCBS TV, Channel 2, New York. Summer Semester, produced in association with St. John's University in New York, presents the Italian-American experience, past and present. Today's topic, labor and industry. With E. Howard Malasani, president of the Italian-American Labor Council, Mr. Malasani. In the late 19th century, in the beginning of the 20th century, many hundreds of thousands of Italians came from the old country. They poured from the farms, from the mountains, from the cities, from utter despair, from areas <clears throat> where they had found the impossibility of making a lively livelihood for their families and making any possibility of education for themselves or their children. They came to this country hoping that they would find the so-called streets of the great America, paved with gold. Instead, they found an America of work, of work which they all too often found very difficult to obtain, a work which they found that they had to compete with so many others who were already here, a work which in their competition with the others, the others resented. They resented them because they believed that these new immigrants were reducing their standards, were increasing the hours of work, were cutting into already miserable pay. Uh, but they had to work, and they had to survive. So as they survived, they found that there was need for something more than just work. And amongst these groups, there were some of the revolutionists who had left Italy, the socialists who had left Italy, the anarchists who had left Italy, who realized that there was need to help, to help their fellow nationalists to at least become part of the American scene, the American work scene, and not to be ground up in the fodder of the factory or the mills or the mines. And they found that the only way that they could achieve this particular way of life would be by organization. And in finding that way, they're joining the large organizations that began to exist at that time, became the cornerstone for some of the great unions that exist in America. Yes, I advisedly say great because the union labor movement of America, <coughs> not only has it helped America, it has helped industry as well. Because by increasing the standards of the workers themselves, it also stepped up the standards for industry and it stepped up the American dream with which we are all too familiar. American dream which so many of us take for granted today, but which was based upon this uh, work that was performed by the immigrants of old. And amongst these immigrants were the Italian immigrants. We look at the needle trades as one classic example of the type of immigrants coming into a field, a field which was the scene of intense exploitation. And it's a scene where even today there are people who are attempting to exploit new immigrants who are coming into the marketplace. We see in the daily newspapers talk of homework re re recurring in certain areas of the late large cities, in the slum areas, in areas of the Bronx of New York, in areas in Chicago, in areas in New Jersey. We see that coming up again with the new Hispanic groups that have come into this country and the new uh, Asian groups that have come into this country. Things which were experienced by the Italians who came here in the early part of the 20th century. 
But let me talk primarily about the Italian-American experience and what we had to undergo in order to meet the problems that were faced through face with that time. There were men who understood what it was, was to organize people. And there were men who understood what, why it was necessary to get the people to work together to at least establish decent norms of livelihood, decent wages, decent working conditions, decent sanitary conditions. Because it was not merely a question of wages and working conditions. It was also a question of the family, of being able to put the children through school, of being able to carry out that dream which was latent in the, in the families of all of the Italians who came here, the hope that their children would find a future better than they had, a future which would lead the children into the ranks, which it did, into the ranks of the professions, into the ranks of the small businessmen. This they had hoped for, and this was something that they could achieve, not by being exploited, they could achieve by being organized. And they did, and they were organized, and they organized the garment workers, and they organized the clothing workers, and they organized the shoe workers, all organizations that started around the turn of the century, and organizations which, in their own right, were the organizations which led eventually to the greatness of the labor movement which we know of today, the AFL-CIO, a movement which has carried in its heart the hopes and the aspirations of Americans of all ethnic strains, but which co carried in its heart the hopes and the aspirations of these contadini, these braccianti of Italy, who had come to America not knowing anything, not knowing any trade, 